Many Christian leaders teach their followers that yoga is demonic. That if you go to a gym, take a yoga class, work out, sweat, do some postures, maybe even meditate for a minute, you're putting yourself in danger of being possessed by an evil spirit that could take over your soul and your body, lead you to make all kinds of bad and destructive decisions, and ultimately end up sending you to hell as judgment for your sinful life. And these Christian leaders are typically fundamentalists. They are evangelical or charismatic Pentecostal Christians. And they teach uh, that, especially if you're a Christian, you can't practice yoga uh, because it's antithetical to your faith. Again, you're going to end up unknowingly worshiping other gods and opening yourself up to demons and then going to hell. So I wanted to examine some of the teachings of these Christian leaders and see if they lined up with the truth of what yoga actually is. So I decided to look at an article by someone named Doreen Virtue called There's No Such Thing as Christian Yoga. And Doreen Virtue is an interesting person. She apparently used to be a popular New Age teacher And then she converted to fundamentalist Christianity and renounced all of her writings and teachings and now spends her time speaking against yoga and meditation and spiritual practices that are not explicitly Christian and telling people that these are endangering their souls. And so I looked at her background. Apparently she has a master's in theology and a master's in counseling psychology. So we have a lot of common, in common in that regard, her and I. Uh, but looking at her article here, I can tell you from the outset, every single statement she makes is demonstrably false. None of them are based on reality. So as someone who's highly educated, she comes across as someone who really doesn't have a clue what she's talking about, like who has never actually studied the thing that she is so heavily invested in her career and speaking out against. So I recommend this to anyone who opposes something. Be able to accurately represent what it is that you're criticizing or you're going to look really uninformed. So let's look at this article. There's no such thing as Christian yoga, DoreenVirtue.com. First, she says, yoga is pagan idolatry. Every pose in the Yoga Sun Salutation series is bowing to different pagan deities. Yoga does not glorify God and is breaking the first and second commandments. Okay, so first of all, this statement isn't true. Every pose in the Yoga Sun Salutation is not bowing to different deities, uh, multiple deities at least. The, the Yoga Sun Salutation, it's... It's kind of in, in reverence to uh, Surya, the, the sun deity, I guess in its traditional origins. It's not multiple pagan deities. It, it's really the sun or the dawn uh, representing the, the divine as a whole, or you could say God in Christian terms. Uh, but this was in an, in an original spiritual context, actually doing these poses. It uh, doesn't have to be a spiritual practice, and it isn't for most people. Uh, so this is, it, it actually is glorifying God because the sun here just represents uh, the divine, like, like God. And the sun is used as a metaphor for God in the Bible, too. Uh, so <laughs> I don't see a problem here. Uh, but but it's, it's not even meant uh, necessarily as worship, or you don't have to take it that way. Uh, and so this is the thing. If yoga is pagan idolatry, then so is... Christmas. So is Easter. Uh, what do you think that egg is in your hand when when you're hunting Easter eggs? You know, it, it for for Easter, the Easter bunny. Is that a Christian symbol? Do you have a problem with that, Doreen Virtue? And what about the Christian God Yahweh? So the Christian God Yahweh in the Old Testament was actually uh, part of a larger pantheon. Uh, probably a Ugaritic pantheon. He was one deity among many. He was, uh, so the Christian God is a pagan deity, okay? So by worshiping the God of Christianity, you're committing pagan idolatry. It's the same line of thinking, uh, but really that doesn't make sense. So there's a difference between how a practice originated in its original form 
and how it's being used today. And those two things can be completely different. They can have nothing to do with each other. Uh, so even if something originated as a pagan deity, like the Christian God did, uh, then just that you use that or your beliefs originated that doesn't mean you're doing the same thing, okay? So I'm not actually calling Christians pagan here. I'm just mocking this whole line of argument that it, you need to apply it to yourself in the same way, okay? You're really worshiping Yahweh, who's, who's a demon, in, in your line of thinking. So, but it's not true that it's bowing to different pagan deities, uh, doing these sun salutations, and it says, okay, there's no way to scrub yoga clean and make it Christian. Holy yoga is an oxymoron. Um, okay, this is, again, not true. Yoga as it is practiced in yoga studios, which is probably mostly what is being referred to, what people think of when they do yoga, is really physical exercise. It's not, it doesn't tend to be very spiritual. There might be some encouraging words, uh, and there might be a little bit of, of breathing, and, and it's, it's used to help people get in tune with their bodies, rest their minds a little bit, cultivate more awareness. Uh, but that's not really a partisan religious perspective. You know, you can really do that in any religion. And so yoga as it's being practiced is very different from how the yoga asanas, which are the poses, were originally developed. And this is also a complex history, uh, how the asanas came to be. Uh, but I think for the most part, they're viewed as, pro as postures that facilitate meditation. So not as an exercise program. Yoga as exercise is really a relatively late phenomenon that uh, came to the West in, in the late 1800s. And um, it's, now, it's been developed into something completely different from its original context. So you could say that, well, actually yoga in its original context in Indian psycho-spirituality and in Indian religion was about what you could call spirituality. Uh, it's very different from Western religion in a lot of ways. But this process of psycho-spiritual growth and of progressive state of expansion of consciousness and unity with the divine. Yoga means union or yoking together with, with the divine. So, but that's not the yoga that's being practiced today. It's physical exercise. And, but anyway, the yoga in the past with these asanas were, were mostly meant to facilitate strengthening the body so people could sit for long periods of time in meditation. And they could also promote other spiritual benefits and different different streams of, of Indian thought. Like, they were being used differently. It, it all depends on who you're looking at. Uh, but, but it looks nothing like what's being done today. Um, so, yoga means yoke, meaning bound together with the Hindu creator God, is what she said. No, that's not what it means. <laughs> it doesn't mean being bound together with the Hindu creator God. Does she, even, does she even know what Hinduism is? Hinduism is a diverse uh, conglomerate of many different ideas about spirituality. Uh, so some are atheistic, actually, having no God. Uh, others have multiple gods and but a lot of them uh, see the divine as something all-encompassing that is the totality of reality. And even the gods that they have are more representations of different aspects of, of reality, uh, quasi-metaphorical. For other Hindus, they're literal. So it, the Hindu creator god, th this, this just reflects to me that she hasn't actually studied Hinduism, that she doesn't even know what it is. Um, but even if, if it did mean this in its original context, when you see a yoga class in the gym, they're not, they're not doing this. This isn't happening, okay? So it says the yoga mantra Sanskrit chants namaste and om are blasphemous worship of a false god. What? All right. Namaste is a Hindi word that means hello. <laughs> That's it. I mean, people use it in a spiritual context, too. 
uh, and I, I mean Sanskrit or what it, it has an idea of reverence, of, of bowing, but, but it's a gesture, it's a greeting. It's not inherently worshiping a false foreign Hindu god. You can use it in a Christian way too. You can just say, hey, I'm honoring you. I, I revere you. You can use namaste to bow and re- before the Christian god, before Jesus. It's great. Om is not about a worship of a false god either. It's this it's this sound, it's the symbol. It has a lot of different meanings to different people, but it's n- blasphemous worship of a false god. It, that's not what it means. It says many bi- Bible passages warn us against pagan practices like yoga, uh, including Ephesians 5.11, take no part in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead expose them. Okay, this is not <laughs> what the Bible verse is saying. Take Yeah, don't take part in... Uh, deeds of darkness, expose them. How is doing an exercise program a deed of darkness? Uh, you, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, like harming people, killing people, that's the kind of thing. But but this is, this is not even the context of this Bible passage she's talking about. And um, again, yoga is not inherently pagan and then she says yoga may seem to create the illusion of peace temporarily but only jesus can give us lasting and true peace oh that's nice Uh, but but so so why she's acknowledging here that yoga can create peace isn't that interesting and and then saying no you got to go to jesus to get this and she she said she repented that she did yoga and she recommends this website called truthbehindyoga.com Ooh, let's take a look at this huh all right, so, so I've looked at this website, truthbehindyoga.com. It says a lot of the same things, um, and she's talking about yoga. Uh, it's interesting. She says it's opposed to biblical teachings. Okay, well, how, how is it opposed to biblical teaching? Yoga as it's practiced today. How is, show me, please, how doing these postures that, that help people to get into their bodies and to to gain more awareness, to work on that mind-body connection, to have release. It often helps people to heal multiple physical conditions. It decreases anxiety. So actually, yoga is an evidence-based practice for mental health and helping people with a lot of physical issues. There's tons of scientific studies that have been done and are being done, especially in applications to mental and physical health. Uh, So we know that yoga is helpful. If you're gonna talk about it producing fruits of darkness, show me the evidence that this is harming people. You can't just say something and then not back it up with reality. But if we wanna talk about something that's harming people, let's look at evangelical Christianity. Let's look at fear tactics like what you're teaching here, telling people not to do things that are healthy for them, but instead to bow the knee and to listen to fear-based teachings, telling them that they're sinful, that they're broken, they're evil, that their sexuality is bad, that they can't trust themselves, that they need to be hostile to anyone with different beliefs because they might end up in hell, scaring them with the crazy, maniacal idea of hell. I mean, is that not demonic? Is that not a deed of darkness? If not, I don't know what is. So, it says the Lord of the Bible strictly commands us against having anything to do with pagan gods. Okay, so again, it's associating uh, yoga with pagan deities because a lot of these asanas and poses evolved within what's now called Hinduism, which had these different deities. But again, okay, so the whole Bible is rooted in paganism. Literally, the, the... pre-Hebraic people, uh, and and in parts of the Bible, you'll see that that God is, is it, it talks about El Elyon and El, uh, the, these different deities, and, and they're ascribed to the, the Hebrew God, but they're, they're different names from deities in, in the pantheon, in this context, and they acknowledge these other gods. So then Christianity is pagan, dude. Get out of it. What are you doing? You're breaking the first and second commandment, Doreen Virtue. <laughs> so just by doing something that originated in a religion, okay, you're not practicing the religion. You might, if you want to, you can do that, but that's not what's happening with most people. 
All right. It says here that, uh, she, oh, she also criticizes meditation. All right. So, so she says here that these things are dangerous because they open up people to spiritual experiences. <laughs> All right. That's great. Why doesn't Christianity do that? Huh? <laughs> This is amazing. I love it. They're acknowledging something really key that, that was really missing for me in uh, Pentecostal and Charismatic Christianity, too. They told us all about the supernatural realm and signs and wonders and miracles, but I didn't experience it. I mean, there was a lot of emotionalism and uh, some suggestions, some suggestible states, but I mean, this looks great. Sign me up, please. Uh, it, it, this is funny. It, it says here that these things open people up at, to these experiences, and and she said that she's had these experiences of of peace and bliss. <laughs> and then it says it's a deception. So watch out. Okay, so watch out for things that actually help you. You can't trust the things that bear good fruit, because those that's the sign that it's a demon. Demons do good things, okay? And the things that promote fear and enslavement to a cold ideology, that's what you should trust because it makes you terrified, it crushes your self-esteem, uh, it, it, it tells you you shouldn't educate yourself and go explore this exciting world of diverse cultures and spiritual ideas because it's all gonna send you to hell. I mean, that's what you should trust, right? If you have an actual ecstatic spiritual experience and and maybe you see these other beings like angels or, or these 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 things that might look like deities. They're, they're all demons. They're all evil because you didn't get them by going to church. You didn't get them by reading the Bible. So you can't trust them. So it's amazing to me that they're teaching this. It's amazing to me. So why do you have to scare people from this? You know, why... Why is your religion so uncompelling that you can't trust people to explore other spiritualities and religion and you just have to scare them from it, okay? So so what? If, if it actually is, is demonic, then uh, you, why are you afraid? You know, people should, shouldn't be looking at these things. They should be finding it in you and in your religion and shouldn't have to feel they should look elsewhere. I mean, if your truth was so compelling then if I go and do yoga and I have this experience, I should like, no, you know, I should see the bad results in my life. I should, when I have this, this peace and this overwhelming joy and this ecstasy, I, I should see my life falling apart. I'm experiencing so much peace. Oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, I, like I, I feel at one with the universe. I feel peace with other people. I'm taking care of the environment now. I, I'm, I'm suddenly respecting other cultures and other belief systems that are different from mine. Like, what's going on? All the churches are going to close now. <laughs> this is this is the tactic here, and it, and it's fear. And not only is it fear, but it's not based on truth. They can't even accurately represent what they're criticizing because they don't even know about the other religions. They haven't bothered to study them or take an honest look because they're not about truth. <laughs> this is about fear. Uh, and at least be honest. Please, Doreen Virtue and other people who are criticizing yoga, like read a couple Wikipedia articles, seriously, and you will be a lot better at your job. So that's my take <laughs> for now on Doreen Virtue. I know she has a lot more out there. I'm going to go more deeply into it in future videos. But, you know, I think... You can relax if you're doing yoga as an exercise regimen, uh, looking at the, the science, looking at the medical benefits, looking at the mental health benefits. If you're an atheist, if all you want is that, great, go for it. Uh, yoga is evidence-based and a lot of people benefit from it. And if you're a Christian and you want to worship Jesus, a lot of Christians do it and benefit from it and see no incompatibilities with their faith uh, because they understand that, you know, just because there were religious associations or there still are for some people doesn't mean they have to use it that way. Just like, you know, you have your little Christmas tree and your other pagan Christian traditions and even a lot of the 
the stories about Jesus were influenced and came straight out of Egyptian religion. Like Christianity is insanely syncretistic. It, it's it's very pagan religion. So so why don't we just all celebrate our paganism, okay? And that, that's really all I have to say. I'll leave it there. So I'm Andrew Jasko. I'm the founder of lifeafterdogma.org. Uh, I was once a fundamentalist Christian minister, and I since left, and now I help people heal from the spiritual and psychological abuse of fundamentalism and to find a healthy and empowering connection with themselves, with the greater whole of humanity, with what you might call spirituality, whether that's atheist or religious or spiritual or something else, whatever works for you, your own empowerment, your own evolution. So if you want to consider a coaching session with me, sign up. There's a a free consult session on the links below. Um, Check out my articles and free resources on lifeafterdogma.org. Thank you. Namaste.